Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. We will continue. We've been talking about features that we can look at in the present times and identify an apostolic ministry or uh, an apostle. So there are some more features. I'll go over this particular chapter. And then as we look at the section ahead, we have about 60 trends uh, that are set to emerge Right, the apostolic uh, uh, within the church. And this has been compiled by someone known as John Eckhart. Uh, so he repeats some of the features that I've already spoken of. What I'm going to do is I'll take us through the current set that uh, I'm discussing. And then when we come to these 60 trends, there I will only touch on the uh, newer ones, which I've not mentioned so far. That way, uh, I'll go over it. I don't know. It might take 15 minutes, 20 minutes or something. But if we finish, we'll just stop with that. And then uh, next class, I'll come back and talk about the apostolic in the church and the apostolic church and all. And we can uh, wrap up our study of the apostolic. So continuing uh, in uh, chapter for here, I said that you know the apostolic is uh, pioneering, uh, causes us to have a lasting foundation. Uh, it comes up with uh, good plans and then new plans, and also execute those plans well. Guard doctrine, uh, very careful to establish people in the Word of God. Activate and equip believers for spiritual ministry. The, uh, those who are in the calling of apostles generally end up as fathers and mothers to the body of Christ. Then um, establish order in churches. So this much we saw. Now, a few more things that we would notice uh, in apostolic ministries is they have the capability of influencing leadership governmental you know, uh, uh, authorities. So people who are in positions of leadership, authority, uh, they would reach out to them. So if we consider the life of Apostle Paul, we, we know Sergius Paulus, right? That was one person whom he reached out to uh, in Acts chapter 13. Uh, so in this manner, we notice that they speak to leaders. And even towards the end of his uh, journey, he went and he was minister. Though he was in trial, it was actually a ministry because different governors came, uh, you know, different people came to question Paul. And each time he gave the testimony of his life, each time he spoke about the transforming power of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's speaking to people in authority. So in that sense, what we notice is that the apostolic has great influence. You can look at it that way. Okay, those ministries uh, that are apostolic or people uh, who are apostolic or uh, leaders who are apostles, God gives them influence. They can you know, have a say in what's going on in the, uh, in, in the region. Okay, now this doesn't mean that they have some political weight and uh, or a political sway. That's not what we are talking about. Spiritually, there is an influence which God gives them. That's how we look at it. Okay, now what else do we see about uh, apostles? Apostles have a godly independence. Okay, so when we study the life of Apostle Paul, he states in Galatians chapter 1, he says, look, I uh, did not have much time like to spend with uh, the apostles in Jerusalem. Okay. He did not have. In fact, he went, I think, he writes that only 15 days I went and I spent time with Peter. That's about it. And in those si silent years, he did not go and get groomed under the apostles. So... In a way, God shaped him by himself also. But that was fine. He never felt uh, that something was wrong uh, or that you know he really needed to be a part of uh, a leadership group. And that's how he would ga gain his um, affirmation and validation. He was OK to be independent. So sometimes we find that apostles are like that. They don't mind. Now, if they are part of a group, 
well and good. But if they are not, it's like they can, can boldly rise up, even if they are alone, and get the work done. That's the kind of people they tend to be, the apostles. So there is a godly independence. It's not like an arrogant independence or a proud independence, but it's a godly independence. They don't mind. They can go alone. They can get the job done. So that form of confidence and boldness also comes with the apostolic anointing. Then what else? Supernatural manifestation of signs, wonders, miracles. Could somebody please read 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 12? Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. When I was with you, I certainly gave you proof that I am an opposer. For I patiently did many signs and wonders and miracles among you. So we notice that, that you know, he is saying it's part of the evidence of being an apostle also. Mighty signs and wonders. When you consider all the things that happened through the life of Apostle Paul, I'm just taking an example of Paul for you know uh, understanding sake. The supernatural blindness on Elimus, you know, by Jesus, it happened. How we don't know, but then when he was hindering the preaching of the gospel through Paul's life, it happened. Then you find that a, a, a man who's never walked in Lystra, suddenly he begins to walk. Okay, So these are all like mighty signs and wonders. He's never walked. It's very similar to what Peter and John uh, uh, saw happen at the gate. Beautiful in Acts 3. So <laughs> there are amazing, amazing uh, miracles signs that take place you remember acts 4 the people pray and they say lord you do more signs through the apostles because they also understood that the apostolic carries that anointing with itself you know supernatural happens to every believer that we know but there is a connectedness to mighty signs and wonders and the apostolic so that's why the people recognize that and they prayed, Lord, you do more signs and wonders through the hands of the apostles. So that's another feature. So when we have somebody in that apostolic uh, 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 ministry, we would notice mighty signs and wonders. And these signs and wonders obviously will lead to an impact uh, at the time of the book of Acts. Many people were coming to know. God. Thousands of people got saved on the first day through Peter's sermon. And then you have, uh, you read that daily, right? People were being added to the church. So there is an impact on Jerusalem. Something changed in the city of Jerusalem through uh, the work of the apostles. So there is an impact. Uh, there is, uh, you know, different things that are going on so that is part of the apostolic and regarding persecution we've already talked about it so now in these features which have been listed i told you 60 trends that uh, we expect to see emerge among us what are the ones which are somewhat different right now we've we've discussed many things you know what what's going to happen so we will see the common things such as there will be an importance on signs, wonders, miracles. Uh, there'll be an importance on revelation, right? And insights on the mysteries of God. So when apostolic ministries are there, they will be prophetic also. Like they'll try to find out what is God saying, the present truth, and then um, uh, enrich, refresh the people with that truth and the moves of god they'll steward the moves of god okay in a, uh, a powerful way so that's that is something that we are seeing uh, happen and uh, we will see happen even in the days to come then extension of of the ministry new territories that we've already discussed right and uh, uh, 
spiritual warfare i think spiritual warfare is your next point here where uh, you would find that the apostolic because it's about entering new territories so whenever we are talking about establishing a church or establishing the kingdom of god in a new territory satan will not be happy about it so then a feature of entering in has to be accompanied with spiritual warfare without spiritual warfare pioneering is very difficult so in the apostolic there will be an emphasis on prayer prayer believers authority spiritual warfare so when all these things are together with your pioneering getting ideas from god implementing the ideas it works okay because it's a spiritual uh, task that we are undertaking so part of the apostolic anointing is also spiritual warfare understanding of how to battle uh, our our adversary the devil so that also is another feature of the apostolic okay here's the next different thing what uh, this person john eckard is, is writing is for kingdom advancement the apostolic will also experience he says uh, a supernatural provision so there will be resources finances uh, people coming in or human resources you will find that these things are adding up or increasing uh, through the apostolic anointing only then you can send out uh, missionaries right you need the you need money you need people train people and so in an apostolic setup you will find that these things will increase and that's how the ministry will be able to develop so that's another it's a different thing different feature that uh, we can expect and uh, he writes here a spirit of faith so in general when we consider apostolic anointing we know that it is associated with boldness because it's about doing new things but a spirit of faith among the believers also so because the ministry is apostolic because the anointing of the leader is apostolic you would find that even the believers come up with new things they have faith to step out and do kingdom exploits because that's how they see things being done in their midst so you know uh, you find that the people are also bold and uh, they overcome unbelief they step out and do great things for god the next different feature would be the fellowship of leaders in a given region so part of the apostolic is unity okay while we study the apostolic it seems like you know there is godly independence and thereby uh, the apostolic leader or the apostle will stand out you know among all the other leaders and uh, receive all the prominence receive all the fame but a true apostolic ministry or anointing is such that it actually brings about humility and unity of leaders think about again people like paul think about the apostles of that time they may have had their own issues you know disagreement on how ministry should be done disagreement on you know certain uh, doctrinal truths but in general they all worked together they all came together they all served together uh, they they honored one another so when even that acts 15 uh later in 16 they send out a decree they make a clear uh decree on you know circumcision the matter of circumcision paul did not do it on his own there was a barnabas you know and as you read that chapter you find that there were the apostles of jerusalem you find that there were other elders also in this particular meeting there were other elders also that's why it's called as the jerusalem council so a unity among pastors leaders ministry heads okay uh, so 
that will also begin to take place under the apostolic anointing. So for us to think that because the apostolic sounds so bold and pioneering, uh, all these strong leaders are going to start fighting with one another, right? Because they all want to do exploits for God. Uh, true apostolic anointing actually brings a sense of humility, a sense of unity among leaders in the city. Okay, so kingdom work, if you want to call it that, you, know, you have that uh, book, right? Kingdom Builders, APC publication, and uh, a course, uh, Kingdom Builders. Kingdom mindset is a part of the apostolic anointing. So when you find an apostolic leader, you will see that their efforts are in bringing togetherness among pastors, leaders. So, you know, they may have these conferences or so apostolic ministries have these conferences, uniting pastors, helping them work together, encouraging them, developing a kingdom mindset. So that is all part of the apostolic ministry. Um, upgradation of churches in the present truth. We already talked about how revelation is a key part of what the apostolic does. Uh, but it's possible that some churches can be dry. Some churches could have gone um, you know, spiritually bankrupt. Uh, but the apostolic anointing brings refreshing. So even as the ministry or the leader reaches out to churches, what happens? Maybe they don't know the present truth. They have not felt the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But this ministry will bring it into dry churches as well. So you can see uh, uh, what we are calling as an upgrade or a revival or a reviving of, of churches you know, that are connected to the ministry. So uh, refreshing uh, and uh, reviving. Then reformation, reformation and change because the apostolic is connected with newness, right? Newness, boldness, creative ideas. Um, you would find that changes or impact is what actually happens through the models of ministry that uh, come out of it. Reformation is transformation. So you can expect a city transformation. I'll just give you one example. We think of working among youth. And uh, some of the normal ideas are, let's have a youth meeting. Let's uh, invite people on a Saturday. That's a normal way of thinking. But when you think in an apostolic way, you think, how about we go to the college campuses? How about we get permission? You know, maybe if it's legally permitted, why don't we go there? How about we impact hundreds and thousands of students at the same time? Uh, so creative ideas, how can we impact them? How can we bring in you know, godly principles to them? Maybe we can create an app. Maybe we can uh, you know, uh, publish uh, something or we, we get into, nowadays you have new media, right? You, you have uh, AI, you, you have uh, gaming. Uh, so we are thinking of impacting tens of thousands of young people, not just a Saturday meeting. But you see, that's an apostolic mindset. Because what are we looking at? We're looking at reformation. We're looking at um, you know a large impact. We're looking at transformation, city transformation, uh, national, global impact. OK? Uh, so the apostolic thing's very big. The apostolic thing's very you know, impact-oriented thoughts. So that's the difference. That's the difference between just a pastoral kind of a, 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 an anointing and an apostolic anointing. Reformation, change, new models, new ways. How can we do this in a new way, uh, right? So like even I think APC Bible College, it's, it's very apostolic because here we are, people from different countries connecting. So through each one of you, wherever, whichever region you come from, some part of India or some part of the world, you are becoming a carrier 
you know, of that, of uh, the fire of God, the revival, and you impact your nation, you impact your region. So what is this? It's actually a new model. Otherwise, how would we think in a standard way? We, we would think, yes, we want to equip people. Let's bring uh, 20 people. Let's teach them the word of God over three years. But the new way is now technology is available. People also, to some extent, you know, connecting to a class, it's basic. Most people know. Why not go online? Why not take it globally? Right? So the apostolic way of thinking change, impact, uh, reformation, transformation, uh, that's very different compared to a pastoral way of thinking. OK, moving on. What else do we see? Um, we would, OK, the, he puts one statement here, uh, the point 27. He says, changing and shifting spiritual climates over regions and territories, causing a new receptivity to the gospel and things of the Holy Spirit. So some shift happens in the spiritual realm as this anointing is released. I think all other points here we have already covered. I will just uh, uh, give it to you for your you know, um, study and understanding. So these ones are not so different from what we have learned so far. It does talk about social justice, new ways of doing outreach, street ministry, um, uh, and uh, making an impact. Of, for the church in the city as well. Okay, so uh, I will just stop with that for today. Uh, any thoughts, any questions, any practical discussions we can have? Let's do that and then we will move on uh, next class. We'll just touch a little bit about uh, yeah, apostolic impact and stop in the next class. So yes, uh, Jeffina, you had something to ask? Yeah. So uh, we talked about uh, apostles going to new places and uh, extending the kingdom. So I just want to know, uh, so we we know that missionaries go on uh, new places, mostly as far as I have heard. Uh, missionary work is very different. They go into a complete new place. Uh, sometimes they go into a complete new language. They learn the language and then something very different. So is, does it mean that every every missionary is an apostle? And I have one more question, like, uh, can we desire to be an apostle? Like, <laughs> I mean, I know it's a very, very, very big thing. But uh, can we have that desire? And can we pray like that? Like, uh, like I want to be an apostle, or, no, I, or else uh, develop me uh, in a way of an apostle, or something like that. Can we have that desire? Uh, and these are my two questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jafina. Thank you for that. So you see, every apostle is a missionary, but every missionary is not an apostle. Okay, because missionary is going out and entering new territory, but they may not have the other features of the apostolic. So you can be a missionary, but you need not be ap apostolic for that. You can just go to a place uh, to share the gospel. You can just go to a place to teach the word of God. That makes you a missionary. Now, an apostle is much more than that. That is why I said every apostle is a missionary, but then every missionary is not an apostle. Does that help? OK, fine. So we've answered the first question. Second question, can you come again? So uh, I just want to know, can we desire to be a apostle? OK, so the answer is we can't. Because these are, these are, uh, these are not grace gifts. These are offices. So when we read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, we see here that uh, Christ Jesus, he gave gifts to the church. 
the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist. So for the equipping of the saints uh, for you know the work of the ministry. So it very clearly tells us that it is by appointment. Unless we are appointed or handpicked by God. For example, if you take uh, Paul uh, on the road to Damascus, Ananias, God speaks to Ananias and he says, I, this man, he is going to stand before kings. He's going to. So in God's mind, God has already decided this is an apostle. That is a. But can I be apostolic? I can. That's what in the next class I told you. We can be apostolic, but we cannot be apostles unless we are called by God. Yeah, so that is how it is. Sure. Okay, thank you. Good questions. So, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Would having a couple of churches make somebody an apostle? Let's imagine that, OK, I have planted five churches. Am I an apostle? OK, Jeffina says no. So yeah, see, uh, being an apostle, it, it has a complex set of uh, features associated with it, as I've been describing. Uh, so one has to be like, you know, that that uh, spiritual energy is very different. So just having multiple churches also would not make somebody an apostle. You you can be a you know great pastor, and you have uh, a good number of churches, but maybe time can tell. If you see that consistently leaders are being raised up, they are being well equipped in the word, the doctrine, uh, well instructed, and the churches are multiplying over time. Yes, we could we could look at all this and say, oh wow, you know, looks like very apostolic. Seems like this person is an apostle. So the apostolic generally has a very large impact, very large impact. So here in India, I, I have heard it said that people like, uh, you know, the DGS Dinakaran, yeah, people like them, in their times when they started out, there was really like a move of God because people were not, you know, uh, yes, evangelism, People were coming to know the Lord and all, but it was almost like a move of God that took place through somebody like DJ Sinakar in those times. Um, uh, and I'm talking about you know, the early days. Uh, so that's very apostolic, touching different parts of the nation and then also you know parts of uh, the globe. Uh, he he did not have multiple churches, but the ministry cut across regions and impacted nations. So you may call it as apostolic ministry. Uh, and then, yeah, do, you, do can you think of any examples of people whose ministries are apostolic? I think now there are a lot of uh, um, preachers calling themselves as apostles. <laughs> so it's quite yeah. challenging to say their names or not. So, huh. <laughs> yeah, not sure, Pastor. I, think. Uh, I don't even know if it is right to call ourselves as apostles. Uh, any thoughts on that, Pastor? Like, and also, we see that a lot of uh, people. Uh, it becomes like, uh, I'm sorry to say, but like a fan following. And uh, as we said in the beginning, like more like 
uh, father father uh, uh, kind of a thing and it, it makes a big deal out of it so um so my question kind of is like um in case if we come across with some people so because i personally have uh, met some people who considers few others as their father and fathers so do we say anything or do we just keep quiet or um, so the thing is john see it's an excess there is a spiritual truth here uh, that you know when when a mature person a leader is grooming others and they are growing in the lord whether we like to say it or not this whole father son thing is going on but the excess is that you know they've made a doctrine out of it that okay i am your father you are my son and this is like a you know covenant relationship it can never be broken so the error comes in there when that this extra extra uh, things are added to the father son apostolic relationship so what do we do about it see we have to uh, as pastor always says he says amplify the truth and you know the the lie will disappear so we have to amplify the truth i remember i don't know if you were there in those meetings when uh, uh, we were hearing about this concept of father son globally globally it was going on uh, you know a spiritual father son you have to be connected to me for the anointing to flow through your life and all but there's no biblical basis for that because anointing flows through god not through some man so pastor did a series uh, called uh, spiritual fathers i think that's the name given to it i don't remember the exact name but it is in our apcwo um, sermon resources you can go and you can listen to those sermons uh, at least two sermons if i'm not wrong about this concept of spiritual fathers and uh, he he's gone through the scriptures properly and he has you know analyzed it is it right or wrong uh, to to make such a big deal about somebody being my spiritual father or spiritual son see people sometimes use it to control others when i keep saying i'm your spiritual mother spiritual mother it's like you're obligated to me now to whether help me financially or help me in some other way or show up for me when i'm in need so it's actually spiritual manipulation okay uh, so uh, so i mean that's the reality if if somebody is overdoing this truth so what we can do is we can quietly direct them to some of these resources you go through it first and uh, not in a uh, you know uh, if required in an outright way you can uh, refer them to these resources or in a subtle way also you can just say hey we have uh, this would you like to go over it go through it because we are demystifying uh, this you know like this uh, um uh, very fascinating concept of uh, being a spiritual father so give them some resources john that's what i would say and whether we can call ourselves apostles <sighs> see paul said that i am an apostle uh, appointed by god he introduced himself like that sometimes when i think there was an issue of acceptance because they people accepted peter better uh, than paul i don't know i think it's it should be a very rare thing john uh, and hopefully i mean we are talking about paul mighty paul and all but in today's times uh, i think this is my way of looking at it i it might take a lifetime to figure out whether somebody is an apostle so you might have to wait for 30 35 years of ministry for you to understand that you're doing an apostolic work and for people to understand that you're doing an apostolic work so after 30 years if you want to say oh apostle but the nicest thing will be if others affirm you with that title and you don't put it you know doctor apostle prophet reverend so and so it it it's very uh, what can i say it's not at all a humble thing to do to name myself an apostle so yeah my thoughts yes pastor yeah thank you for the insight yeah yes. sure sure sure
yeah thank you thank you yeah but i think nowadays a lot of people are called apostles i don't know how uh what do you know oh okay she's saying there are many uh instagram instagram accounts which have names apostle so and so see again another thing is this understanding of what is apostolic also people don't have like i myself i learned it when i you know began to study all these things and i'm sure even all of you have been enlightened uh, in in the last couple of weeks so that's another problem we don't have enough teaching on the apostolic so obviously people don't understand what it means they just use that word apostle and put it against the name okay so jeffina is uh, uh, when i asked the question do you know any apostolic ministries or apostles she wrote here billy graham billy graham yeah i could consider uh yeah i think you can consider his ministry apostolic uh, but i think billy graham is more evangelist from what i can see i feel he's more evangelist because i don't know if they raised up churches it was more about getting people saved mm -hmm. okay okay he was apostolic and he was uh, an evangelist and he was apostolic yeah correct we can be correct right so people can be apostolic in what they do but they need not be apostles yeah sure uh, any any other questions thoughts uh, brother lubega anything that you wanted to ask because i remember you were saying you want to learn more about the apostolic pastor what is confusing these days uh huh is that uh, everybody who has a, say a local church i'm talking on my local context here that anybody who has a, a local church and it has maybe one or two branches he declares himself an apostle if not <laughs> if not an apostle he calls himself a bishop now you find bishops of 21 years you find bishops of so, but me, I think, just as you've said, a person to, should be called an apostle, maybe through the laying of hands when the professor comes and they declare him, say, an apostle, or through the characteristics. When you look through what an apostle does and you see that you are, you are in that line, it can take a lifetime. It is not easy if you just wake up one day and you add something on your name that you say that I'm now Apostle Collins. <laughs> it is he, so hard these days. Yeah, that's uh, that's true, uh, Brother Lubega. But also, as I was saying, I think the understanding of this term Apostle is not enough. So that's a problem among God's people. They don't understand what it is. They just know that, oh, many churches, I'm an Apostle. And others also encourage them, so they go ahead and name themselves apostles. And even education is a problem. A person mm -hmm. these days gets three, four, five lines in the in the, in the Bible, and then he calls himself an apostle. But now, like APC is helping a, a great deal to train people. Now it's not easy for one of our members here to call himself an apostle tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, uh, you know, that there's some impact, right, through uh, all this teaching in your part of uh, the globe. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Brother Lupeka. Yeah, understanding the apostle. So nowadays, if you go and you look up, there are many networks in ministries which have networks of churches uh, 
that is very apostolic so back when like i was a kid i've not heard of multiple churches multi site churches and all that but nowadays that concept is very common uh, one ministry has multiple branches they live stream the services across uh, you know they have uh, campus pastors so it's you sort of see that uh, there is that apostolic way of doing things which is touching a lot of ministries and if you look carefully there are some ministries which have a uh, lot of uh, churches like vineyard you know vineyard is is one uh, ministry where you have so many churches um then what else do you do you have certain names new frontiers i've heard you know they have uh, many churches so network of churches that is very apostolic to have network of churches okay so uh, this way i'm sure across in your nation in your region uh, you would be aware of some such ministries that have uh, that have pioneered many churches that are overseeing churches that have raised up many leaders and they're continuing to uh, equip them with with good doctrine and uh, good structure okay so uh, there are lots of such uh, churches coming up ministries coming up and uh, this is only going to increase okay so the apostolic is only going to increase the prophetic is only going to increase so that is a given Uh, because we are living in those times where god is strengthening uh, the fivefold ministry offices you will see while we are feeling sad that people are not recognizing uh, the apostolic office we will also see true apostol apostles and uh, begin to thank god for them so all this is expected okay so let me just stop here very good questions practical questions i'll also try to bring you some you know names and all that in the next class when we close off but you come back to me with some more questions i think that will really help all right uh, so we'll close now let's pray uh, could somebody please lead us in prayer i know we prayed for brother isaac's family but i just feel like we need to pray some more so please pray for uh, brother isaac's family uh, we've all heard the sad news that he went to be with the lord uh, so yeah please somebody lead in prayer let's pray for isaac's family too Let's pray. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that we learned today, God. God, I pray that uh, whatever we have learned, uh, we will put it into practice in our lives. And we thank you for uh, calling us, Jesus. Help us to understand uh, more about our calling. Uh, help us to walk in your ways. Help us to. not to dilute the doctrine in any way when we go out and teach and preach lord uh, fill us with your wisdom and knowledge whatever we have learned help us to put it into practice and help us to understand more about this apostolic ministry jesus and god right now i pray for brother isaac's family we thank you for his life we thank you that he was an amazing student he was an amazing slave of christ he worked for you we thank you for his life jesus right now we pray for his family lord strengthen them jesus in the times of trouble you are an everlasting help lord god we believe that you will be their everlasting help right now we don't know what are the struggles we understand their pain we take part in their pain jesus but we just pray that you will comfort them you will strengthen them we pray for the ministry that they are doing jesus that it won't stop but they will be strengthened much more to do more for you jesus you comfort them lord you bring back the joy in them jesus you bring back the peace in their home whatever they are struggling with jesus we know that you are more than enough and god i pray that they will understand this truth that you're more than enough be with them jesus uh, you are the god who heals the broken hearted we declare your name over them we declare your healing over them right now jesus heal their broken hearted jesus 
bring back things that will bring uh, joy into their life fill them with your love wrap them in your arms jesus so that they can stand again so that they can preach your gospel again so that they will be strengthened they will keep moving forward in this life knowing that you are enough knowing that your love will cover everything knowing that greater days are on the way knowing that joy is on the way knowing that jesus is in be with them and guide them jesus we pray for them we ask you to heal them right now jesus what else we can do as we are partaking in this prayer god we thank you that you are touching them right now you are healing them right now and you are bringing back the joy we know god you are a god who never leaves never forsakes we know god you are a god who never leaves us during the times of trouble we believe that you are with them we know that you are guiding them right now we just pray that you heal them you heal them jesus you strengthen them and you comfort them we love you and we honor you in jesus name we pray amen amen and thank you thank you jefina thank you everyone god bless you let's connect for uh, next week sessions which will be our last class and uh, yeah looking forward to that Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.